So today we are very fortunate and blessed to be joined by uh, Sangeeta Kalani De Sudha Raghunathan ji. Uh, namaskaram Sudha ma'am. Namaskaram. 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 Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today uh, in these circumstances. Uh, how have it's you been pleasure. managing? Especially because you know I I wished to to do this because y'all were youngsters and y'all were trying to get something new up. Um I thought people like us should join hands with you so sudha ma'am we wanted to start um, start off by just exploring a little bit a little bit about your musical background an interesting point that uh, we could kick off with is is with teaching styles so between different banis and you know between different teachers styles vary yeah. enormously in how akriti is taught and classes are run being a self confessed ml wasn't the kumari super fan um and having read a lot about the way she used to teach i believe her style was very unique in that a lot of the the classes per se were just through listening to to her sing or her practice or her concerts so um we wanted to ask a little bit about your experiences how that was for you um uh, whether you found it challenging not having so much of direct class in terms of being taught kritis and if you maybe adopted the same style for your students first of all uh, yeah i've been very blessed to have a guru um, <laughs> as the legend i mean yeah, i fail to even uh, express myself in words when i start to talk about my guru dr amal vasanth kumari amma uh, after i learned from my mother chudamani and uh, two other gurus in between uh, tv vishwanathan sir and bv lakshmanan they really taught me songs and kritis and uh, of course the riyas that we did in my mind i had you know kind of uh, settled down comfortably in a compartment where uh, the guru would sing a line and i would sing back and then i would come back to the next class uh, with revision of what has been what had been taught so when i was thrown into this uh, space with mlv amma it was more shock than um, surprise or joy but then it was a challenge that um, i loved and i think right from being a child i've always loved challenges and uh, that was one of the reasons why i enjoyed every minute that i spent with emelviama right at the beginning you know the, when i went to meet her and uh, she heard me sing it was uh, on the day of krishna jayanti i vividly remember that scene and i think i was not scared of her presence but awed by her presence she said she spoke to my mother particularly and she said you have been her guru maybe you have taught her in a different pattern in my parampara i have learned from gnb sir gn balasubramanian sir and he had no time to teach me if he was teaching me akriti he would just sing it and we would have to notate it at the speed that he sings at. wow like even like dari ni te lu su you know the speed and the sangatis it's like uh, six sangatis or seven sangatis embellishments on the same sentence so we had to notate that at the same speed uh, sudha has come to me at a time when you know when i was like sudha and i was learning from gn sir so i am extremely busy and traveling um, i travel countries i travel for singing for leg dems uh, i go to rishi valley school to uh, teach the students there i'm on the faculty there so i would be ready to take on sudha if she is willing to learn on her own these are the words that she precisely used avale paadam panni po avale vandu paadam pannuvo apdindra nambike ungalku irundadunna na vandu inda inda sheet la sign pandren because i had gone requesting her to to be my guru if i received the central government scholarship this was what she precisely told my mother and my mother looked at me and i was not ever going to let this chance go <laughs> this was a golden opportunity and i think anyone would have done what i did 
I can't boast of having done it exclusively. Not knowing of the repercussions, not knowing of what was in store for me, I said, yes, yes, I will definitely do it on my own. <laughs> Emma smiled uh, because, you know, she knew what was going to happen, what exactly was going to happen. Whereas I was naive and I was just uh, so enthusiastic to uh, be with Emma Vyama. Even the first class, is, it was just talking. There was, no, there was no singing. It was just talking about her experiences, talking about uh, you have to do this, you have to do that. You have to start learning all this. The first, that was the first thing that she said. She said, you have to start upgrading your repertoire. In the uh, parampara or the style, Romba demanding, it's difficult. It's, it can be a, a kind of a shocking surprise for you. So it's up to you to do all the homework and get to learn all the kritis because this year you will play the tambura with me and then on in concerts so that you get familiar with audiences and organizations and, and stage experience. After a year, then you will start to do the vocal support. When she finished the conversation with vocal support, I was looking forward to that. And hence, right off the bat, started working towards that. Started learning all the kritis from her. Uh, we had cassettes then. She was mighty impressed with the fact that uh, I was able to learn all those kritis so fast. And hence, I think even within six months, I started to sing with her as vocal support at wedding concerts. You know, at the more informal concerts, I was sitting with her and uh, trying to match her uh, prowess. Uh, mere shadow, of course. But she was such an encouraging guru, you know. She would always appreciate with a nod with a smile, look back and smile, or um, she would let go of some spaces in the concert uh, where, you know, I would repeat the second time and things like that. Those were all little positive signs that I got from my guru that I was doing also on the right track. If I might share the truth, literally two kritis that she sat down and taught me. One was Bala Gopala in Bhairavi. Muthuswami Dikshitar's uh, Kruti and the other was Srinivasa Tavacharanau in Karharapriya. Both were uh, Vilamba Kala Kritis and hence I think she, uh, well, teaching didn't mean that she sang and I repeated. She would sing and I would record and then she had her uh, old notations in notebooks. She gave that to me. I would make mistakes while uh, singing with her and then get some very curt glances <laughs> but I think it was all part of the, the, the teaching package and it worked out very well. Till today I have one little um, thought that tugs at my heart and that is that I never had my guru attend any of my concerts. A yeah, very poignant, poignant thought to have and that's a fascinating insight into your period of learning with MLV Amma. How do you find uh, this changes with your students now? For example, what things do you find are similar in your teaching approach and what is different? Much of it is similar with my, uh, with my very close uh, Sushyas who learn from me one-to-one -one, like uh, Deepika Vardarajan, Ramya, uh, Sangeeta Swaminathan, Radhika Rajesh. Uh, all of them, uh, they learn the Kriti and then I ask them to come. But I there is a difference because, as I said, Emma Vyama never had the time to listen to me sing or repeat. All, all she heard was what I repeated on stage with her. Mm -hmm. But here I have deliberately made the change because uh, I felt uh, I owed it to my disciples to uh, take the baton across to them. And there is a stage in every musician's life when you certainly have to give back. Uh, to the incoming generation. These students uh, learn by themselves and I uh, try to guide them when they come and sing in classes. Ask them to sing more of uh, manodharmic uh, stuff like Raga and Neraval, uh, Raghunathana Pallavi and uh, Swara Korvais, things like that. And in case it's a difficult Kriti, then I ask them to sing the, uh, the more complex Sangatis. Mm. 
otherwise i think they are pretty much on their own of course now i've started to take my music uh, teaching across the world i do attend uh, uh, some classes where we interact and i teach them line by line all sorts of before you had pen and paper to notate it you said you know mlv amma uh, Yeah. Sir and yourself with MLV Amma, you know, trying to rapidly notate the <laughs> Sangatis to to uh, to larger yes. Kriti. Um, but as now we just go online and you know we're kind of spoiled in a way for choice because you have various different versions of the same song notated. Um, yes. And online classes available, lectures available on YouTube. Is this a good thing for students? Is it a confusing thing for students? um how how do you think these resources should be used uh, by young people you said it all i mean it is a good thing but it is a confusing thing because the student is still a student um and the mind you know kind of is not ready to decide whether if you have three versions of the same kriti of bala gopala a b and c you're not sure which one is the right right one um three of them sound almost similar but that maybe c has more sangatis a little more adornment on the kriti uh maybe b is more plain so you're not sure whether to take uh, the sangatis from c and have a's as the fundamental version of the kriti so there is a bit of confusion but it's good that you are exposed to so many versions of the same kriti mm -hmm. so you slowly start to mature you know after after a few years of learning i guess you you are able to uh, discriminate between what is right and what is wrong and able to choose according to uh, your style i mean everyone has a particular style there is as much this much that the voice can do right each one is gifted with a different texture of a voice and hence i think depending on that and depending upon your gurukula um it's 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 wise to choose the right version mm -hmm. i always opt for one to one or you know the presence of the guru when i say one to one it doesn't mean really one to one but maybe one to 50 as well but then the guru is present is physically present and the student is able to watch the guru do the sangatis because everything matters you know they have to understand how the sangati is presented now when i sing mate malaya dwaj pandya sanjate see i mean there is the te goes in and comes out it's not sanjate not that sanjate you know that right? so the body language the physical presence the way you lift the voice uh, lower the voice the, you bring in the nuances the highs and lows maybe even the hands everything matters i feel every little detail is important while learning and and probably i'm a little old fashioned that way because i have learned from gurus directly uh, by observing them i feel that uh, the physical presence of a guru is uh, kind of something that is indispensable you need to meet the guru at some point but of course uh, i also appreciate the fact that technology has brought in so much of proximity between guru and sishya one thing that you wished is that uh, your guru actually never heard you give your first performance which kind of suggests to us that you didn't give a performance until so that was 1990 91 Uh, until no, no, no. I had. I was giving performances. That okay. was the sad part. I was giving. I, I started see. to sing at the academy in seventy nine. Wow. So, okay. Seventy uh, eight okay. or seventy nine. I, I, I don't know if it's. Uh, you know, she felt. Uh, I required more time, a little more time to mature, and uh, because when my mother, you know, we have these grades in the All India Radio, which is Prashad Bharati. so when i was directly behind because um, i won the all india radio competition so when my mother uh, approached mlv amma and said uh, can i ask suda to apply for the a grade she said no controversial photo you know the time will come and i will let you know so she knew
knew. I mean, uh, she knew it and uh, she had it in her mind, I guess. It's just that destiny, you know, pulled her away. And that's one reason, you know, why I attend my, the concerts of my disciples. Of course, it scares them. And uh, as soon as I enter the hall, they go like, oh, the eyebrows are all lifted up. And they, you know, they, I can see the body jerk a little bit. But then I think it's important that uh, I do attend a few concerts. So that I'm able to tell them one-on-one, -on -one, you know, what can be bettered. What can be uh, improved upon? What what was lacking, or an honest opinion? I I don't think anyone else can give uh, an honest opinion uh, more than a guru herself. That goes for the students as well. I don't think we value anyone's opinion more than our gurus, and for them to be there in the in the audience is definitely special. I think. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes, you gave a very interesting lecture demonstration in Parthasarathi Swami Sabha in December on the transition from being a student uh, to a performer. You were saying in the years gone by that it was the teacher that sort of sanctioned the student to ascend to the stage and say when they were ready. Whereas now almost a lot of situations it's the parents and the students that go and say, you know, it's time for us to take up a performing role. And students are performing at younger and younger ages. Um, right. What is your take on that? Is there a balance to be had in terms of stage experience versus immature exposure? Yes, I think too much of exposure when you're not ready uh, kind of tarnishes your, uh, I wouldn't say the growth or uh, makes you feel uh, important too early. I mean, when you're on stage, you, you are in control of the entire situation. Everyone knows that. However young or however old the performer is, they attract all the attention and it gives you a nice high. So too much exposure at a time when you're not really ready for that, uh, I think can be a derogatory. Again, I reiterate that the guru has to give the okay to the student uh, and say, yes, uh, what kind of concert is this? And uh, have a discussion with the student and the parent. What kind of concert? Is it a temple concert where you're singing for half hour? Yes. What is the content? It is this. Okay. Are you ready with it? Where is the swaram going to be? Where is the raga going to be? Uh, how are you going to present the order of the songs? It can be discussed and presented. But then if you start, if you take that lead and then you start to give more concerts without telling your guru, you might be overexposed and it leaves you with little time to mature mm -hmm. into... Uh, 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 a musician with a longer span of singing or playing. It doesn't have to be that you, you're going to take this up as a career. I, I even mean when, it's, when you're playing a double career in your life, when you're, when you're doing two things. You need to do what you do best. Yeah. And hence, it's uh, important that your guru guides you. Or it should be a parent who knows music and who's able to guide. Just because a child is able to learn uh, an alai payude of uh, maybe sung by Sudha Raghunathan, uh, I mean, it, it almost sounds the same when the child sings it, right? So the mother gets excited. And then uh, maybe for Krishna Jayanti or something, she says, okay, now you, you, will, be, you will go on stage and sing alai payude. Not knowing whether the sangatis are right, whether the grammar of the raga is right, whether the child is singing to perfect laya, be it an aditala. Whether the child is adhering to the shruti, the pitch. All of these factors, maybe the parent is not so confident about. She's ignorant about. She's not a student of music herself. Then, I think the danger lies there. Um. On a more yeah. serious note about the Me Too movement and about women and how they're sort of treated in the Carnatic music uh, scene. And I know that uh, you've been quite vocal during the, um, the sort of coming to light of various allegations in, in 2018 on social media. In your opinion, do you think things have changed since then, since people started bringing those um, allegations to light? And you know, is there is there like a system in place now for being able to report things um, 
without feeling like you're going to get uh, judged or kind of shunned. A lot of people are sometimes scared to report things if a very senior musician has sort of treated them in a certain way. Do you think things have changed since all that? Well, the Me Too issue is a little bit of a complex issue because uh, it started off as, as a rapid fire, you know, I mean, going up and we didn't know where it was going to stop or how it was going to culminate, uh, how aggressive it was going to become. But suddenly it, it died um, as, as quick as it had begun. It was so sudden. And then by December, there was nothing. Um, uh, I am in support of those um, students or uh, girls or ladies who were you know, affected by this and who complained, who registered complaints, but they were all anonymous. That's the sad part. We were not able to do anything because none of them uh, were ready to come out officially. So we did form an ICC and uh, I am part of the ICC, but un unfortunately my hands are tied because uh, we haven't had an official complaint as yet. And unless anything is official, unless something is official, we're not able to take up the case. We're not able to question the perpetrator. No. Of course, uh, I do understand the trepidation, the, the, the anxiety that the person would have uh, to bring it out officially. You know, like you, you said the right thing. You said, uh, would they be shamed? Would they be uh, kind of uh, shunned by society? Would they be questioned by media? There are a lot of things, but we did assure that it would all be absolutely confidential and uh, the right uh, justice would be given. Hopefully uh, having the, the, the committee and seeing uh, sort of senior musicians like yourself, encouraging people to come forward will go a long way to, to um, resolving cases down the line. And uh, we're grateful that you've, you've taken on that role, ma'am. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, you have our full support. And going back to your influences, obviously Emily Amma was a huge influence. Who else do you think has influenced you the most in your musical development besides your guru? It has been my guru. It is my guru. It was my guru. It will be my guru. I mean, there's no change in that because her style is so vibrant and is and the GND style, the GND parampara itself, mm -hmm. that is that holds uh, a kind of uh, glamour that uh, that was there 50 years ago and it still is prevalent. Even today, um, when you listen to uh, some of the Radha Alapanas of uh, G N Sir or Melvi Amma, it's unmatched. You know, the prowess is so strong. I mean, it's like uh, even S. Kalyan Raman Sir. Uh, when you listen to some of his raga alapanas, even rare ragas like Nasika Bhushni or uh, Kapriya, you know, Kosalam, anything for that matter, Gavati by uh, G. N. Sir, um, the lesser sung uh, ragas like Andolika, Naraini, the style has not, is, is still not outdated. I mean, that's the best way to put it. It's not outdated. It still is uh, stylish, very stylish. I mean, there is a kind of a, a, a majesty in it. There is creativity in it, immense creativity. What was sung in one concert would not be repeated in the other, rather wise. Mm. You know, the structure wise. It, I've heard my guru uh, repeat a Kalyani in three concerts uh, and uh, within a week. And every Kalyani was so different from the other. So that uh, was something that I uh, absorbed from them, that uh, it's not necessary that you need to keep changing a lot of things. Even if you did the same thing, do it differently. You know, if you're always in a comfortable zone, if you're always practicing and you sing what you practice, you're never going to come out of that zone. I have realized that Melviyama never practiced. <laughs> 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 and hence when people ask me do you practice for three hours how many hours do you practice well it's, it's a bad example to say uh, I don't practice but uh, because you do need to practice for the sake of the voice to hone the voice to perfection 
to keep the voice exercised. But then you don't have to practice every Sangati or every Swara that you're going to sing in a concert. It's all mentally done. Besides my guru, I think Jian sir's uh, music and S. Kalyan Raman sir's music influenced me a lot. And of course, the other two ladies, the wonderful legends, Fatima Lama yeah. and Bharat Ratna and Mr. Balakshmi Amma. Altogether, I think I, I lived in this compartment with the five. The yeah, what an illustrious yeah. company. Yeah. So now we're going to do a 21 question rapid fire round. So I'll start with the first question. So what would be your dream job if you weren't a musician? Gynecologist. What's your most humorous anecdote with your guru, MLV Amma? We were in London. I remember that. And there's a Krishnamurti Foundation school somewhere there. We had a concert there. And Emil Vima decided to uh, present the Venkatesha Suprabhatam, you know, a few stanzas from Venkatesha Suprabhatam. But she wasn't too familiar with the words, the lyrics. So she asked me to write them out. And uh, I wrote them out boldly. The Kausalya Suprajara, Rama Purva, Samhya, Pravartati, Uttishta Narasa, Dula. Kartavyam Devamanika, Uttishto, Uttishta Govinda, Uttishta Garudadvaja, Uttishta Kamala Kanta, Trilokyam Mangalam Kuru. You know, and then I wrote it and gave it to her, and then she was going to sing that as a stanza, as a free verse. Uh, Kanya Kumari was on the violin, and Manar Guri Sir was on the guitar. We started the concert, and when it came to this stanza, for some reason, uh, Kanya Kumari and I started to giggle. I don't understand why. I still uh, can't figure out why we started, what triggered us that we started to smile. And then, you know, literally like school children, you, know, you just giggle for nothing. And uh, the giggle becomes larger and larger and larger. So I was supposed to sing Kausalya Supraja Rama Purva Sandhya Pravartate Uttishta Narashadula I was supposed to do that with my guru. But the moment I started Kausalya, you know, I started to <laughs> little shake around over there. Because I was laughing. And then she turned and looked at me because I sounded very weird. And when she looked at me, uh, you know, it was more that the, clo the, the closeness with which we sat it was like we were literally breathing down each other's neck. The moment she looked at me, Kanya's laughter became a little more. It became, <laughs> became a little more vocal. She was doing it with the violin. Ta, 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 ta. She was doing that. But she was also shaking. And Emma and Mama didn't understand what was happening. And then we really couldn't help it. We burst out laughing, both of us. But we turned our face away. She was, Emma and Mama was so angry. I mean, can you imagine that? whole scene. <laughs> Sitting there with the legend MLV Amma, she's seeing the Suprabhatam and I'm supposed to uh, rhyme with her uh, presentation. I'm sitting and giggling there and turning my face away. I didn't know what was in store for me after the concert. She was so livid. She was really livid. She was angry because she herself was not so sure and she was you know, really depending on us to complete that stanza and we let her down. So it was uh, not only humorous, but it was embarrassing. So your favorite time of day to sing? The night. After all the work is over, uh, before I go to sleep, sometimes uh, I get into the mood and the, 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 the quiet around me. And I think I usually face the window and look at the sky. And it, I think it inspires me. What is your favorite place to go to for like leisure or relaxation when you're not doing music? I go to the theater, the movies. I watch a lot of movies. Um, when I say a lot, it's like twice a year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, literally go out and watch movies. I watch movies on a Netflix and uh, Prime Video and all that. I go up my terrace and we have a, a, a kind of a canopy-like uh, structure. I just sit down with that. It's a white sheet and there's a, there's a lot of space there and there's only trees around me. Uh, it's almost like you're one with nature, especially the night 
with the star spangled sky it's it's a beautiful song what's your um, most unusual or distinctive musical collaboration le rhythme de la parole it was a group that i worked with kevin shimrani he's a percussionist it was a group of 10 i think uh, nagwa and a kora player and then kevin his father and his brother uh, two iranian musicians and then four of us uh, we had a workshop and we worked together and then presented concerts in in i think uh, it was starting from morocco to sweden to uh, paris to sydney it was wonderful i mean that was an experience that I, i can't forget what is the most common misconception about you that that i'm too serious that i uh, that i'm arrogant oh, oh. never hopefully this had not proved that <laughs> Those who know me really laugh when they hear other people commenting. You know, so um, what's one food item that you couldn't give up? Well, I couldn't give up, but I did give it up. It was tea, masala chai. Oh wow! Well. I used to love tea. I mean, any any form of it. I used to use ginger. I used to use um, you know whatever cinnamon and stuff, and a lot of flavors. But then I had to. give it up because uh, i had this acid reflux and i was advised not to take uh, tea with milk favorite location to perform outside india it is the broadway new york broadway wow alice wow yeah, alice tolly hall yeah alice tolly hall at the lincoln center it was amazing fantastic Absolutely amazing yeah it was it was, i wasn't even singing it was you just have to do that to sing no strain on the voice one musician that you wish you could have met from the, before your time nc vasant kokila what is your favorite item to to cook or bake i love to cook roasted potatoes <laughs> and i'm really good at it and extremely good at it i mean i don't think there's another person who can cook as well however uh, much the quantity is or however little the quantity is whether you have a tawa whether you have uh mustard seeds or not curry leaves or not it just turns out so good i i think i have the magic touch so well, the moment this lockdown is done we're coming yeah. over now for you see the arrogance now you see the arrogance <laughs> <laughs> next time you're in the uk i know they say you have to you know cook for your guests but you can be more than welcome to come <laughs> <laughs> you must come recent movie that you loved that you saw we are uh i think it was uh, a malayalam movie it's about a girl who uh, wants to who studies to become a pilot i think and then she's she's a victim of acid attack oh gosh and and then you know she has to give up her uh, dream and then how she comes back fighting and she does drive a plane finally what is your favorite film song Huh. It's so unfair that you asked one. <laughs> I I like Malari Maunama because uh, of the way the the entire song builds up. My own gurus, Ada the Manamundo, Adal Kaniro. Then there was another Gana Lolan, which was in Char Kesi Hall also. So one thing that you've done is performed across the globe to all kinds of audiences. Uh what do you think is the most important factor when connecting with audiences unfamiliar with Carnatic music, the language of the lyrics etc. What is the your kind of key piece of advice for communicating Carnatic music to audiences like that? Um without talking too much. I mean in the concert it's important to uh, brief them about what you're doing i think that that really helps uh, mm. be it a french audience or be it a swiss audience whoever they like to know what you're doing because it's it's completely alien to them they haven't heard a concert let's say that they haven't never heard a carnatic music concert even the way you sit cross legged they surprised you sit on the ground and what's the what's that permanent noise that you hear in a concert the drone when that surprises them 
that there is no change in that. And then, of course, uh, you start with the Varnam and then you move to uh, Ganesha Kriti and then you sing Swaras at some point. Then you sing a Raga, Alap, then a Kriti or an RTP. And then they have the Murdangam solo. So now there's so much happening. There's so, so many details mm -hmm. there. So it's good for you to explain to them very briefly without making it uh, like them. But there's a very thin line that divides uh, when you say it's a like them and when you say it's a concert. Because yes. even in like them, some like thems, you sing a lot. So instead of um, trying to uh, educate them too much, you break the fluidity of the Con the music in the concert mm -hmm. by talking too much. What I do is I finish the talking and then I go for two compositions almost for 45 minutes. That's how I do it. So I tell them the meaning of the sense of the Kriti. Now, if it's Tyagaraja, then I say, now he says, uh, why aren't you showing your compassion on me? Or what is it that you find uh, in the bhakti of Lakshmana and Sita that you have them by your side and you don't and you are uh, so indifferent to my pleas. No, that's how you explain that's as brief you need to be and then you can also tell them about the mood of the Raga if it's a Karahara Priya you can tell them that you know it has uh, instead of going saying Chatu Shuti Rishabam Asadharna Gandharam you, know, you don't need to do all of that because they don't of know, course, even if you yeah. tell them it's Sagar the Gandharam, they're not going to know what the Gandharam is. So you, it's, instead of telling them those details, you just tell them about the Raga. Now this Raga gives you, uh, gives you kind of a, a relaxing uh, mood. Now if, if you're singing a, a small Kriti Nilambari, and you say this is a song that uh, Rama, is, is sung to Rama by Tyagaraja, and then uh, it's, it, it, it's a Raga that you sing at night time, it's a Raga that uh, probably gives you an idea of, uh, of of what the mood of Tyagaraja was like putting Rama to sleep was a lullaby like mm -hmm. and then if you're singing something in Bauli you can say this is the morning Raga this is the dawn Raga then it's, it, wakes the, it awakens the Lord you wake the Lord with this Raga and you know simple details as that you know if you're singing a Sahana you say this this evokes a lot of compassion and a little bit of pathos. Yeah. Some words like that help them to relate to what you're singing. And so they it's have about those, giving them the brush strokes rather than the yes. technical specifications. Yes, they, they start to have that imagery in their mind. Hmm. And that helps them to enjoy the music. That's a very useful insight, especially for all of us musicians outside of India, you know, who... Uh, regularly perform to audiences that um, may or may not be familiar with the music. So it's a, you know, a very uh, uh, pertinent piece of advice for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. We wanted to explore with you how one can go about internalizing the music. It's often a word that's um, used quite often saying you haven't internalized your music today. I can tell you haven't. But what does it mean to really, in your opinion, to really internalize the music? How can musicians go about this? And is, is time the only answer to this? Time is an answer, yes, but time is not the only answer. There are many interpretations to inter internalizing. Internalizing is, uh, I always internalize because uh, when I learn a Kriti, I don't repeat the Kriti often at home. I go straight to the concert with the Kriti. So, but then it's, it was uh, probably uh, advised by our gurus and their gurus that Every Kriti had to be sung at least 100 times at home to get that perfect assurance that you have internalized it. Now you see how the interpretation of the word has changed over time. For me, I internalize and then internalize is I take it in. I learn the Kriti, but then I don't practice it as many times at home. It's all in the mind. I go over it in my mind. This is the next Sangati. That's the next Sangati. Okay. In this Sangati, that's, that I go a little louder at that part. You know, everything is structured in the mind. That gives you the uh, reassurance. That gives you the confidence. That gives you that poise on stage that you're sure of yourself. Unless you are sure of yourself and you savor every note that you give, 
it's impossible to reach out to the Rasika. You have a foundation, the Samudaya Foundation, which is your charity. Um, I'm just wondering if you could just talk about that for a few minutes and how that came about. Uh, we started in, uh, Samudaya Foundation was born in 1999. And uh, we've crossed 20 years now and we've given back about five crores to, uh, to society towards different causes. Uh, it's been more... Uh, uh, kind of leaning towards children, towards healthcare and infrastructure for them. Um, like to give you some examples, like we, uh, for children who are suffering from muscular dystrophy, we bought them wheelchairs and uh, BIPAP ventilators. Uh, we uh, enabled heart surgeries for 100 children. So these are some of the things that we've done. We've also done for the environment. We've uh, cleaned up lakes so that rainwater harvesting can be done. We've also addressed uh, national calamities, like when Orissa had a flood uh, at a point of time. <clears throat> we contributed towards the Orissa flood relief and the Gujarat earthquake relief. And now with COVID-19, we have the Prime Minister's relief fund and we have the Chief Minister's Relief Fund. Yesterday, we uh, wrote out a check for 10 lakhs uh, to the Chief Minister's um, Public Relief Fund. We're also, at the same time, addressing a uh, 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 cause, which is like, uh, it's called, the outfit is called uh, Street Vision Children. And they are children who are living in shelters, uh, the boys, boy shelter and girl, girl shelter. They are children who are, uh, taken from uh, railway stations and, you know, from the beach where they are trafficked. Uh, some of them are orphans. Some of them are single parent uh, children. Uh, so these two shelters hold both the children. So we've uh, financed uh, both the shelters for, because this is a difficult phase for them. Uh, so we've covered mm. the expenses that, that will be, for the month of April, for their food, for the 30 days. So they will eat uh, morning breakfast, lunch, and uh, dinner. This is the moment for me to thank all the donors and uh, well-wishers who have been contributing towards uh, from the Gaia Foundation. See, the trust and the faith that they had that we would use the money to uh, give it back to society to, for different uh, causes. That's something which is very fulfilling. And uh, I think uh, my music has uh, bridged that, uh, mm. you know, the, the donor and the beneficiary that way. And that's a wonderful example for all of us uh, in this time that's challenging for everyone to, uh, as you say, remember those less fortunate who will be really struggling in this time and how all of us are able to use our talents in whatever way to, to alleviate that suffering, it, it's a shining example uh, for all of our listeners, uh, which Thank I'm you. sure um, appreciate. So COVID-19 is, is an unprecedented disaster that, that, has, um, uh, that has really enveloped the whole world, not leaving any nation out. And I wish uh, to tell all the listeners that uh, this is a moment for us to be together, to be united, to be courageous, to have faith in the fact that we are going to come out of this phase, difficult phase. But we need to be extra careful. Social distancing is extremely important. Be in isolation. Um, don't get bored during isolation. Do all the things that uh, you had on your wish list that you would do if you had, if God had granted you just one day of no work. Uh, try and do as much as possible constructive work, productive work, um, keep your brain active, um, keep your physical activity going. This is the time for you to exercise, to walk uh, within the house. There's no need for panic. Uh, as I said, um, friends are extremely important at this time because when you know that someone is, uh, is depressed or very sad about some loss or anxious about something, you can reach out to your friend and 
uh, just chat and tell them that this is transient. This period is transient and we will have light coming in very soon. <laughs>